Hello and welcome back. This is Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports and CheapGunsUSA.com in Westfield, Indiana, and you are watching Marksman TV. Today's video is a tabletop review and comparison of the new SIG P320M17 and the Glock 19X. We will run a side-by-side -side comparison of the two, so hopefully if you're trying to decide between one of these two options, you can get an idea of which one will fit your needs the best. If that sounds interesting to you, please stick around. That's coming up now. Okay, starting off here, I like to get into an unboxing so you guys can compare and see what they come with brand new. Starting off here with the P320M17, we do have the new-ish SIG gray hard case here. But the pistol right inside does have this chamber flag we'll get rid of. And we are clear, and there is one 17-round magazine inserted. You do get a spare 17-round magazine here. Warranty and restriction information, and of course, a M17 patch you can sew onto your operator vest so that all your operator friends know you have a genuine M17. On board. And here is the Glock box, which of course looks just like any other Glock hard case, but this is tan to match the color of the pistol itself. Here we have the 19X. It is clear. There is one 17 round mag inserted, and it does come with two 19 round extended magazines as well. Speed loader, back straps, gun safety lock, and of course warranty information, instruction manual information there, cleaning brush, and a cleaning rod. All right, let's go ahead and jump into a spec comparison of both of these. We'll start over here with the M17. So it does have an overall length of 8 inches. It does have a height of 5.5 inches and a barrel length of 4.7 inches. The Glock 19X over here has a length of 7.4 inches, so about half an inch shorter. It is 5.5 inches tall, the exact same over here on the P320, and a barrel length of 4.7 inches, so a barrel length of about half an inch shorter than on the M17. Okay, so now let's go ahead and weigh both of these, starting here with the M17. We do have a total weight of 1 pound 12.9 ounces. Moving into the Glock 19X with its 17 round mag inserted, one pound, 8.7 ounces. So we are at about three to four ounces lighter on the clock. Now, as many of you may know, both of these offerings come to us out of the XM-17 modular handgun trials that the military had back a couple years ago. Now, what that basically was, was a, a competition, if you will, or trials to find a new standard issue service sidearm for the Army. There were, of course, many different submissions, of course, one of which was the, and that's a lot of FDE on the table, but one of which, of course, was the Beretta M9A3, which was going to be an update from the standard M9. The government decided not to go ahead and stay with Beretta, so they opened up the trials for other uh, offerings. We saw some from FN, of course, we saw SIG, and we saw Glock, and really, at the end of the day, the trials were boiled down to these two pistols. These were the big contenders with one another. And a lot of people did think that the Glock was going to win, as it was already issued with different branches, different special force branches of the military already in service. And the SIG really didn't have anything other than, than in the 226, which was more expensive to produce and to uh, maintain as well. But a lot of people didn't think that the 320 really would stand a chance as the 320 really didn't have a lot of history on the consumer market at that point as well. It had only really been out for about a year or two at that time. But lo and behold, the the SIG P320 did win and they called this the, M the military M17. Um, so this is what we are dealing with. This is what is being issued now today. Now, of course, the 19X is available on the consumer market and has been for the better part of about a year. The M17 uh, co consumer version or the commercial version did just recently hit the market. Within about the past month, it started hitting shelves. Uh, so we will go ahead and sort of move through them here. So let's go ahead and start with the 19X slide. So this is basically out of the Generation 5 family, but the 19X being the X meaning crossover that we have a 19 slide and a 17 frame, and the 17 frame has been chopped down just slightly to fit in line with the 19 slide. But here we do have the beveled front end that we see on the Generation 5 Glocks. 
Here is the extractor, which does double as a loaded chamber indicator. So when there is a round in the chamber, this will protrude slightly and you can kind of brush your finger over that to be sure that you do have a round in the chamber. On this side as well, you do have the Glock roll markings, 19X, Austria, and the caliper designation there as well. Now here in the back, you will see that we are working with a three dot configuration sight setup. These are dovetailed in place in the rear, so they are windage adjustable, but pinned up here in the front, just like all the other, other Glocks which you can access from the bottom of the slide with the Glock tool or a hex wrench or anything there for you. As mentioned, these are night sights. And the night sights do come standard on the 19X. In fact, you cannot get them in any other configuration but with the night sights. Now, the slide itself is made from a hardened steel and does have the NDLC finish, which is different from what Glock has ever used in the past. New sort of to the uh, to the Generation 5 Glocks, and it is an Ion Bond product. And then the Flat Dark Earth coloration is actually the first factory offered Glock color on the market. They have had other colored Glocks before, but those were really uh, special like Lipsy's uh, exclusives or SHOT Show exclusive models, but this is the first main production Glock model that is in a color other than black. Moving into the M17, we do have, of course, also an NDLC coating, and this is a stainless steel and machine slide. You have slide serrations here on the back and the front, which is just like the original P320 versions, which I have right here for comparison. This is the standard P320 compact. Here is your extractor here, and then moving up to the top, you will see there is a loaded chamber indicator, which was not previously on the P320. The front sights are dovetailed in place and are windage adjustable, and you do have a SIG light night sight front and tritium inserts here in the back, and the rest of the sights being blacked out, which is pretty nice, and you have a three dot configuration. Now up at the top, you do have a little cover, which you can remove to run a red dot or any type of illuminated optic here in the back. The only negative about this is when you take that plate off, you are going to lose your rear sight. So you cannot co-witness if your sight battery dies or the sight breaks or goes down. Unfortunately, you will be without sights, which in my opinion is a really bad setup. This, it, also concerning this as a military or tactical firearm. So you would have to assume that these are going to go through pretty tough conditions, which would not be unlikely to think that an optic could break or get damaged. Moving right along, you do have the forward and rear slide serrations up here on, as well. All your roll markings and of course their stamped M17. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the triggers and I'm going to start with the trigger pull weight of the M17. And we have a weight of six pounds and four ounces. And bringing in the Glock. Four pounds, 15 ounces. So we are talking about a little bit more than a pound of trigger pull weight in the SIG versus the Glock 19. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the trigger here, starting with the M17. Now, getting off the bat, many of you may recall that within about the past year, SIG did have a non-mandatory or an optional recall on their triggers because it was found that if they dropped, uh, of course, with, a, with, the, uh, with the chamber in the round, that it could discharge. So it was not drop safe, so you could send it back if you wanted to, and SIG would put in a new trigger. And it kind of has this more thin profile, and it is metal in construction. For comparison, this is the old trigger still in this SIG P320. As you can see, it's definitely wider, also metal, but you can see the diff obvious difference there. So this is the same trigger you're going to get in any of the other SIG P320 products made after that recall. So going ahead and starting here, you have a little bit of take up and then you hit that wall and then you move and you hear that break right there. Go ahead and show you the reset. Go ahead and walk forward just a little and there's the reset. Actually, right into a pull. Very nice, crisp trigger. Very quick reset. And then there is the 19X, a polymer and construction trigger. Does have the iconic Glock drop safety lever there. So of course that has to be depressed before you can start pulling through on the trigger. So I'll go ahead and show you that. You got a little bit more take up, a little bit spongier than on the P320, but you hit that wall. Go into a nice clean break and the reset right there. Show you that one more time, reset and break. So actually, I am a big fan of Glock. I'm not gonna try and hide that in this video. There's nothing wrong with the SIG P320, but I definitely, this just feels more at home to me. It is admittedly a little bit spongier and a little bit uh, kind of creepier than on the SIG, but I, it's still something that I prefer, and it is a little bit of a quicker reset in my opinion. 
Okay, let's go ahead and do the disassembly starting here with the Glock. And you guys have seen it a million times. We'll drop the magazine, check that we're clear, and go ahead and drop the striker. Pull back on the slides very slightly and then pull down on these two tabs, releasing the slide from the frame. Go ahead and pull your double guide rod and spring uh, recoil spring assembly out here at the bottom. Push up on the barrel. And that is a field strip. And getting in here into the M17, we'll disassemble just like any of the other P320s in the same family. We'll go ahead and remove the magazine, check that we're clear, and we are. I'll go ahead and lock the slide open to the back and pull the takedown lever down here to the six o'clock position. Release and let go. And notice you do not have to pull the trigger to be able to drop the slide. Now in here, you do have a single guide rod and spring, more a little bit more traditional than you find inside the Glock. Go ahead and pull the barrel out the top just like we did on the Glock and there is the field strip. Now going a little bit further on this and this is sort of what makes the P320 unique is you can back out this takedown lever and remove it out of the firearm and by doing so you can actually pull up and out the trigger group frame and this is actually where your serial number is so this is your serial numbered part you can then replace it and put it in other frames and therefore change the sort of grip size. Now the grip frame size on this is the medium. Of course, you can get a larger or a smaller, so this is kind of a happy middle, right? Uh, kind of a happy medium right in the middle. Uh, and then keep in mind, you can buy those different grip frames and then just replace your, your to take out your trigger assembly and put it in those frames to change the size of your grips. That was how SIG met the modularity requirement of the XM17 program. Glock did it by virtue of using those back straps, which you saw when we did the unboxing. Both different approaches to a system which works well. Now, one thing to remember is that on the military M17, they did put a tamper-proof uh, takedown lever on the side here, which you need to use some sort of spanner wrench to be able to remove. So it was not meant to be done by the individual soldier at the, at the field level. It did need to go back to an armorer if you wanted to replace the grip size. Of course, that is not the case on the civilian version. M17, you can go ahead and do those replacements as you wish. Bringing this in for a closer look, you will notice that it is pretty much exactly like the uh, just the standard P320 grip. Now there are there's basically one main difference and that is the ambidextrous safety lever that you have here. Now this of course was also a requirement for the XM17 program. Now manipulating it myself, I really don't like it because it makes it really tough to get to the slide release. So when you're trying to get to that slide release, you are going up over the safety, uh, which is, it's just, it's an ergonomically something I just do not like. Um, but you know, to each his own, there is no traditional safety feature on the Sig P320 as it stands anyway. There's no, no trigger safety, no manual safety. So to some people, this could be a good option to have a safety on there. If you like to carry your firearm cocked and locked round in the chamber and the safety on, that is now an option there for you. Now the slide, or I'm sorry, the magazine release can be removed and switched over to this side. And the slide stop is also ambidextrous. So this is a full ambidextrous design, which we would find, um, to be sort of commonplace on a military firearm where there are going to be multiple users. Here is a stand, standard M17 rail, which you will get on the uh, standard model P320s as well. Little, uh, uh, little serrations up here at the front if you want to rest your front finger here. And of course, the texturing here is indicative to exactly what you're going to find on the standard model P320. And you do have the cutouts here, which make it easier for you to grip those magazines and pull them out for magazine changes. Moving into the 19X, this frame is going to be pretty similar to what you're going to find on other generation five Glocks. Now, being the 19X, there are a few changes. Uh, number one being that this, like I said, this is a Glock model 17 frame, but because because of the 19 slide, the frame has been shortened slightly. There is rail space down here on the bottom as well. Uh, but keep in mind, you, you do have the just pretty much the ergonomics of a Glock 19, but just a little bit larger grip is essentially what this is. You can use those interchangeable back straps I showed you in the unboxing video. The magazine release is reversible and you can switch it over to this side if you are a left-handed shooter. And just like all generation five Glocks, the slide stop is ambidextrous now as well. Now, during the military trial, as Glock did submit a version that had a manual safety, that was a requirement for the program. It has subsequently been deleted for the commercial version. So you're not gonna find that here on this version uh, as you see it here. Now, a couple other changes made on the military version. You do have a lanyard ring here, which was not a military requirement, but it is a military feature, so they decided to add that. And this lip right here at the front of the magazine well, 
And keep in mind, a Generation 5 Glock 17 magazine will not fit in here because of the interference of that little added lip and the larger floor plate on the base of the magazine. Now, all of your components internally are just like any other Glock. You do have your steel guide rails here for your slide. Uh, all your important metal components, slide stop, ejector, um, trigger bar, all of that stuff is steel in construction as would be expected. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish up here with the barrel. So I have the SIG down here at the bottom and the Glock right here at the top. So the SIG barrel length is 4.7 inches and the Glock is 4 inches. Of course, a longer barrel will give you uh, more velocity out of the pistol, so do keep that in mind for what they come with standard, but you are getting an overall longer package. The SIG barrel does have a 1 in 10 twist and does have a nitron ion bond finish and is made from carbon steel. The Glock is the new generation 5 GMB or Glock mar Marksman barrel, which does have a shorter chamber to give quicker interface with the, with the projectile and the rifling inside the barrel. And it is now a six groove instead of the traditional five. Now keep in mind, it is still the shallow rifling known as sort of hills and valleys, which does give a tighter gas seal behind the projectile, uh, giving it a little bit more velocity as it travels through the barrel. And we do have just standard lands and grooves cut into the barrel on the SIG. Now the Glock does have a target crown and there is no polishing on the feed ramps which is okay because they're both very reliable for what they are. Well that is all the time I have for you today on these. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking this out. If you have any questions please leave those down in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and if you want to see more videos like this please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and do remember to turn on that bell notification so you can get updates whenever we post videos. But again, I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports and CheapGunsUSA.com. You are watching Marksman TV. I will see you next time.